If you like this video, please press like and consider subscribing. Thank you. Mars has been a distant dream for many and after many decades of talking about the Mars, soon it might be possible to visit the Red Planet and all thanks to Elon Musk who hopes to establish a permanent colony on Mars in not too distant future. I'm looking at what SpaceX needs to do and consider before deciding on such a daring odyssey. So we landed on Mars, what next you might ask? To understand what is next, first we must understand the planet and what the planet hazards lie ahead for future would-be colonies. Unlike Earth, which is almost 10 times more massive, with relatively thick atmosphere and gravity that is conducive to our biological physiognomy, Mars, you could argue, is everything Earth isn't. But it is the nearest terrestrial planet in our solar system that can support largish human population and has long-term potential to become more akin to Earth. However, before that can happen, we must first get there, which itself is a relatively complicated endeavor fraught with dangers. Where do we start? Martian, very thin atmosphere, barely 1% that of the Earth, provide almost no protection against external elements, including the surface radiation, which on Mars is deadly and poses serious risk to any potential future Martian colonist. A recent study by two authors, Bruce Yakolsky and Christopher Edwards, professors at University of Colorado and Arizona, argued the lack of sufficient CO2 levels on, in Martian surface and atmosphere precludes potential terraforming, at least with the present level of technology. Problem with Mars, and this is symptomatic of Martian thin atmosphere, is the fact that Mars is a relatively small planet with barely 10% of Earth's mass and 38% of surface gravity, which wouldn't be so bad if Mars was a geologically active planet with volcanism, plate tectonics and active inner core. However, for active plate tectonics you need surface water, for surface water you need thick atmosphere, for thick atmosphere you need gravity and for gravity you need mass. Mars, sadly to report, is caught in a vicious circle or causation loop for lack of a better word. However, we are stuck with a tiny planet and we must work with the cards we have been dealt with. What next? So we decided to set up a shop on Mars and as per initial SpaceX plan, four SpaceX Starship spacecraft have delivered all the essential supplies for first would be manned colony on Mars. And we are about to step on the red planet for the first time. What is needed for initial colony to thrive? Unlike Earth, Mars has no appreciative levels of oxygen in the atmosphere. So air, water, food and shelter are major issues that will need to be dealt with immediately before even first human steps a foot on the red planet. Martian shelters will need to be 3D printed, built by 3D printing bots way before first human touches down. There are some great ideas how to go about building Martian homes and designs that will put any homes on Earth to shame. However, untested 3D printing technology and techniques will require prior testing here on Earth would make things a lot easier for SpaceX to work with NASA and ESA in developing future Martian homes. Test with simulated Martian soil or regolith produced conducive results. The soil is viable as construction material as well as growing medium for Mars-based future agriculture. However, surprisingly, the material can also provide sufficient radiation protection, which is essential on Martian surface. There is a suggestion that the first Martian colony should be built underground and this is indeed a potential solution for future Martian city that can be built into the rock or in lava tubes. However, to build what is quite technically complex process would require hands-on personal touch. We'll need to have actual humans manning and digging tunnels. Even if we had automated bots doing most of the work, someone will need to maintain and ensure machines are actually doing what they're supposed to do. Essentially, we'll need a thriving Martian community with all the manufacturing and engineering skills and know-how, essentially self-sufficiency, before we can even contemplate building anything underground. What I'm saying is, first Martian colony or alpha base will need to be surface based, for we won't have all the engineering know-how, the manpower or skills necessary to commit to major engineering undertaking task that would require expertise and resources of a major engineering firm here on Earth. 
NASA recently held a competition, 3D printed habitat challenge, and some of the entries are out of this world, literally. Some of the entries have offered great engineering and aesthetical solutions for future Martian colonists. However, radiation protection and right amount of light prominently played in all designs offered. Engineering solutions that include oxygen and food production must be considered. Any future Martian colony will require significant food production that can sustain large community. Fast growing vegetables will need to be supplemented with lab grown meat. Unlike Earth, Mars lacks discernible amount of oxygen. And although there is some, the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is very tiny. It will be too complicated to extract it. However, Martian atmosphere, although very thin, is carbon dioxide rich and CO2 contains two atoms of oxygen, something that can be extracted and reutilized for future colony. It is thought Martian subsurface is rich in water and water ice. It is hard to guess how much water ice and liquid water there is in Mars, but that certainly opens many new opportunities for future human colonies. No doubt future NASA InSight mission could uncover and provide important clues as to Mars makeup. Water extracted from Martian surface can be used to provide oxygen, water for human population, rocket fuel for rockets, but also important water for plants and agriculture we plan to grow on Mars. Life support, and this includes water and oxygen, will need to be recycled and reused. NASA has developed a number of life support and resource units designed to support astronauts on ISS or International Space Station. ISS ECLES, or Environmental and Life Control System, recycles all the oxygen, water, and even bodily fluids. Through this process, NASA can maintain closed systems, such as ISS, for up to 12 strong crew. SpaceX will need to develop their own Mars-based ECLAS units for first biomes that are up and running. Securing water and oxygen for future colonists is the most imperative issue. Without this, future human colony can't be sustained or even contemplated on the Martian surface. However, we can't forget food. For without food, colonists wouldn't survive long. So getting food, and ideally grown on Mars, would be one of the main priorities. Initially, this would need to be done by sending large food supplies to Mars from Earth. Scientists here did some considerable research in that field and have grown vegetables from simulated Martian soil, quite successfully I might add. And although there is a very low risk of some radiation contamination in case of some tests, the research showed so far it is safe to grow food in Martian soil. Initially, a large quantity of food will need to be sent along. For every individual sent to Mars, there has to be at least 1,000 kilograms of frozen food sent beforehand. Most will need to be deep frozen for the food needs to last three or four years. And yes, food that is frozen for a while loses texture, taste and nutritional value. However, until colonies fully establish, nutritional standards might be a bit lax. What sort of stuff can be grown in Martian soil, you might ask? Well, so far scientists in the Netherlands have experimented with many varieties of vegetables. And cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes and potatoes seem to grow really fast. However, other vegetables such as carrots, turnips, beans and corn are also quite successfully grown in Martian soil. Okay, so we have water, oxygen, food and shelter salt. What next? These are the very basic requirements for any future Mars-based colony outpost. However, to ensure viability, the colony would need to grow, expand and offer a degree of comfort. We are accustomed here on Earth. This includes parks, lakes, forests and recreational areas. These will need to be built and in case of trees and plants grown on Mars. We simply can't send the materials for these from Earth. They'll need to be built on Mars with manufacturing capacity developed locally. And for that you'll need manufacturing. And some sort of industry based on Mars might be entirely based on 3D printing principles where material pours in and final products is slowly printed out. 
However, processing local resources will need to be done locally. So some sort of processing facility will need to be engineered here on Earth many months before very first humans land on Mars. ESA and NASA are working on few principles in that regard. However, this will need to be perfected by SpaceX to make sure future Martian colony has the capacity to sustain itself. Once all these essentials are in place, then we have a proper thriving Martian colony. Or should I say Mars Base Alpha? How long will it take SpaceX to achieve the necessary preconditions largely depends on funding, interest in space and Mars, but also spirit of endeavor, exploration and taking the chance. First of all, I would like to thank all of my subscribers, but above all, the Patreon supporters and fans of my channel for your massive support. Anyone likes what I do, please consider supporting me through Patreon. It really helps. Also, check out my YouTube community page tab and join the conversation. You can also suggest topics for a future video.